I made that mistake in my 20s and 30s. I was so consumed by work, I did nothing else. When I was 40, I decided to quit banking and go set up a dot-com in the first internet revolution. And the dot-com didn't work, but neither did my contingency plan. It didn't work because uh, of the three basics, two, three basics I talked about. One, uh, the whole uh, NASDAQ had crashed, the stock markets had crashed. So, you know, the roughly plus minus few hundred thousand dollars I had in my nest egg suddenly went to half. And that created a sense of panic. So I realized I hadn't planned enough for my financial well-being. Mm. Uh, as a consequence of the failure of the dot-com, I went into a depression. So I hadn't thought about my mental well-being or my physical, the health mm. part of the well-being uh, either. And then the third thing that struck me as 40 years old, I was trying to retire and I didn't have a community because everybody I knew, they were all working nine to five. So what do you do with yourself all day? Yeah. If there's nobody else you can go hang out with. So I, I sort of came back to banking, which is my you know love by then. I knew I, I enjoyed doing it. But I took this lesson away from there that you've got to make sure the health and the wealth, but you've got to plan. Uh, and you've got to constantly plan for what is it that you will feel satisfied by. Um, and it sounds morbid, but I say, you know, on your deathbed when you look back, what are you going to say, hey, I you know, regret not having done this and I'm really happy I found time to do this. But this idea of always looking, setting an end goal and working back, right? And say, okay, what are the things that will make me happy 10 years from now? And what are the things I'll regret when I look back at the last decade? I think that's a good way to operate. I think the point registers. It, I, I tell people that in the context of your careers. Mm. You know, you think about what job you want to do 10, 15 years from now. Do you want my job? Then you can plan what should I do, you know, 12 years, 8 years, 5 years and 3 years from mm. now. Mm. So my first advice is that spend a little bit of time telescoping backwards. It's always a good thing. Uh, my second advice to people is don't, I mean, the biggest problem with today's um, um, times is the pace of change is accelerating. Mm. And we're all getting overwhelmed. You've got to be grounded uh, in what you are and you've got to uh, be comfortable with yourself. Mm. And once you're that, then the FOMO and the, the desire and the, you know, the, the envy, mm. you start to be able to put that to the side. Uh, and the third thing uh, to me is find a broad set of interests, things that you enjoy doing and start planning and preparing uh, along the journey. Right? So if you enjoy music, make sure you find some time for the music. If you enjoy sports, make sure you find some time for sports. I made that mistake in my 20s and 30s. I was so consumed by work, I did nothing else. It's one of my big regrets in life. Mm. And it, I found it very difficult to go back and pick up mm. what I had uh, uh, left along the way. Mm. So don't give up on things, you know, keep your interest going, keep your friends going, keep the community going. This anchors you. Mm. And so in this time of anxiety, you need these anchors. You need things to be able to hold on to as you go ahead. I think that's a, a useful thing to hang on to.